Hey everyone, so we're here in Japan now after Computex, and we're doing a quick Computex rapid fire Ask GN format. We've got another Patreon Ask GN as always. You can go to the patreon.com slash gamersnexus page to gain access to that one. It'll have a couple of extra questions, some of which pertain to Computex and how we set up. And then we're planning to do a full normal format in depth Ask GN as well. See if we shoot that here once we get home though. So uh, anyway, we're in Japan now and we'll have some content online, some our Patreon or otherwise, or just YouTube, if you want to see stuff from this trip. For the first question, so these all came in through Twitter. Before that, this video is brought to you by EVGA and the X299 Dark motherboard for the Intel high-end desktop CPUs. The X299 Dark is one of the only motherboards on the market with proper VRM cooling. We've tested this and found a significant performance increase over those without active cooling on the VRMs. This board was used in our recent attempt to set a top 10 record in Fire Strike, and you can learn more about the X299 Dark at the link in the description below. So the first question, these call, all came in from Twitter this time. First one was from LHFA042, who said, did Fantax snub you guys? I'm optimistic about the Evolve X, but before I commit to buy, I'd like to see it run through GN thermal tests. We, uh, Fantax was unable to accommodate a meeting after multiple attempts. We are planning on purchasing the case ourselves once it comes out because it got a lot of hype and I'd like to see why. So uh, we did not see it in person. We tried to get a meeting with them a couple of times and they were unable to accommodate one. And so we plan to purchase uh, one of the cases basically is what it comes down to. If you have any other cases you'd like, it's, like us to look at, let us know below if we missed anything from the show. We, we saw a lot of stuff, but it's not possible to see everything and not every vendor is able to make time for us. So. Uh, yeah, I, we saw that we saw coverage of the case. I didn't personally watch any of it. I barely know what it looks like, but I know that I got a whole lot of uh, uh, sensationalized, sensationalized titles on YouTube. So I guess that means it's worth purchasing and looking at. And next question, AT AT one three seven. Where's Fantex? Unable to accommodate a meeting. A useless philosopher says, were there any vendors or manufacturers there who completely snubbed you or refused to give an interview? Does it seem like the industry is moving towards better customer service in general? Uh, first question, refer to the previous two, I, I guess. They, I, I don't know, I'm not gonna use the word snubbed, like three out of three people have used, but certainly unable to accommodate us. Uh, second question, does the industry seem like it's better customer service in general? If you mean like in terms of interactions with literal customers, it's hard to say because people like EVGA, for example, they put out a thing where they increased their warranty period by quite a lot, an extra two years on top of 10 years. So I guess that's an increase in customer service. Uh, other vendors have also been moving more towards focusing on some customer service improvements. But in terms of media relations, I'd say nothing's really changed. It's pretty much the same as it's always been, which overall is agreeable right now. So we don't, we don't necessarily need a ton of changes. I'd say the biggest thing on the media relations side is that it seems like companies now are moving more and more towards dealing with influencers rather than tech media. And so they don't quite understand the relationship anymore. When we show up and they think that it's a, a completely different type of interaction in some instances than it should be, where we're here to report on a product. You know, we don't charge to be at the booth. We're just asking about the product so we can report on it because the thing we get out of being there is the coverage not being paid to be there because we're not a marketing arm. So that's probably the thing that's changing the most in the industry right now. I think some companies just don't quite understand what a traditional technical media outlet does anymore. But uh, we do try to keep everyone informed on why we're present at a particular booth and, and what our plans are and things like that. And then we just cover it and push it to web. That's really, and that's the whole point, isn't it? Is to cover the stuff uh, from a reporting standpoint, not to be a marketing arm. So. Customer service, yes, I'd, I'd say some companies are pushing as always. Not really a big surprise really that people are trying to improve customer service. Uh, media relations are a bit odd at times, but otherwise unchanged. The Bold Man is the next one, says, how much work goes into editing each video for events like Computex? I think you guys did a segment a couple of years ago about your mobile editing setup. Has that changed at all? It's actually, most of the work is on the ground, going to the different venues. So all the real work is before the event where we have to coordinate logistics, basically look at where each company is at the venue because they're not all in the same place or the same floor or whatever, and make sure when we're at company A, the next meeting, which is often minutes away, is somewhere within walking distance so that we can min-max our time spent in each 
quadrant of the show. And we had four people present at Computex 2018. So we had two teams of two. And we have basically uh, sometimes split into, into even smaller teams, but generally two teams of two going around and try to sort of screen some of the, the booths where we're unsure of what they'll have and then figure out if we want to actually go there and shoot a video or if it's more deserving of something like a news roundup or if they're just completely wasting our time, which is also a possibility at a show like Computex. Some vendors, for example, really only have stuff like a new retail box. Not really worth my time to go see. So we try to screen that stuff. Uh, as far as editing, editing the videos at Computex takes a lot less time than at home base. When we're doing stuff like reviews, that takes hours of editing and shooting and then potentially days of testing. Whereas Computex, you're kind of in and out of meetings within an hour for sure, sometimes even shorter than that, depending on if we had a team, like a recon team ahead of me. And uh, then the actual editing process, we try to be as quick as possible. We were uploading videos every four hours during the show for the first two days. So I think that pretty much gives you an idea. But we, the quality is still high. It's just these videos are much, much shorter than reviews. And mobile editing setup, we bring three laptops as primary work machines and then two sets of camera gear. Next question, Jason Kristoff says, why no review of the Seasonic cable bar? It looks sick. Well, Seasonic, we talked to them before the show. They wanted to meet up. I said, I need to know what you have in order to go to the booth because it's really expensive to go to Computex. We don't charge to visit booths, so I have to make sure I can actually do a video or cover something if we visit. And they said we're gonna have a new retail box. They did not tell us about the cable management bar, so we didn't see it. Uh, also, it's a cable management bar. I'm sure it's very interesting, but we don't, one, we don't do reviews of things at shows. We do just like a news video on it. It's not, never a proper review. And two, it's kale management bar. So I don't know, maybe we'll look at it later, but it doesn't seem inherently all that complicated. And I'm sure you can get what you need out of another video. Next one, beta for Prez. Do you think it's worth going to Computex? That is other than being your job, of course. I think it's certainly worth going to for us. Uh, it's fun to be in Taipei and surrounding areas, like we're in Japan now, as noted, which is made much, much easier by going to Taiwan first, because uh, it's basically put it in perspective. It's about 24 hours for us to get from home to Taiwan total a little bit less coming back and that's a lot of it's a lot of torture being on planes that long but yeah it's worth it it's it's a fun place to be in taipei and uh, the show itself is pretty fun being very competitive makes it a lot of fun for me personally just because i like to be there on the ground to see how much stuff we can do how quickly and competently but as far as going as a consumer unless you're already local i'd say no because that's a really expensive thing to do if you're not local and it's a very far journey potentially. If you're nearby though, yeah, it's worth it. Same goes for CES. Next question, MD Grump says jet lag tricks. The, the only trick is book your flights as best you can. So we landed about 6.30 PM in Taiwan, which means we don't have to fight to stay awake that long before we can go to bed. And, and that pretty much fights most of the jet lag. Otherwise it just hits you at random times. Jay from Jay's Two Cents landed early in the morning and his whole first day, he forced himself to stay awake. So. Uh, he's, you'll see him pretty tired in that first EVG HQ, HQ video, and that's why. Next one, Jen Roger says, do you typically stick to a set schedule of what you're going to cover? How easy is it to deviate from the original plan if you see something unexpected or interesting? Pretty easy, that's why we have two teams. The first two days are back-to-back -back meetings nonstop, so there's really not time for lunch or anything. We, we try to get food in the morning, go to the show, cover events nonstop throughout the the first however many eight hours or so that the show is open and then that's basically it it's all editing from there and uh, as far as deviating from the schedule we can do it we try to keep an eye out for things that you all tweet to us always be sure to tweet interesting stuff to us during a show but it just kind of depends on what day so uh, we always try to leave some time open for for that for finding things that we did not schedule for because not every vendor will talk about it like the seasonic cable management bar but i didn't hear, didn't hear about that till too late Batmonger 9, with the influx of 200 millimeter fans and cases, are we going to see 200 millimeter fans and or radiators rather to match either for AIO or custom loops? The answer is yes. Cooler Master is working on a 200 millimeter radiator as we speak, and we'll see how it does. I'm really curious about that because 200 millimeter fans are not inherently good for static pressure. They, they really don't push very hard. Next one, William459, so forth, says, how did this year compare to other years? Some of the coverage I saw mentioned that there were fewer finished products and more prototypes or products that have been shown at CES or last year's Computex. 
one opinion was that the lack of new GPUs were slowing things down. That's really interesting. So lack of GPUs does actually impact the industry because the smaller companies have told us that their sales and their performance as a company actually somewhat hinges on CPU and GPU launches because that's when people build new computers. So if you make cases and that's all you make and you're a small company and no one's buying new systems because memory is too expensive, GPUs aren't out, CPUs are not that interesting or something like that, then it impacts them a lot and they don't have new products to show as a result of it. So yeah, that does impact it. The show is okay overall. There was a lot of really interesting stuff, but you had to work to find it. We had to sort of create the interesting content by really working hard with the vendors to say, no, okay, we get it. Cut through all the bullshit, show us the thing that's actually unique. And that takes work. It takes uh, really knowing who you're talking to when you show up at the booth and knowing how to cut them off when it's time to cut them off and talk about the thing that we're able to identify as actually interesting for the audience and basically tell them to shelve all the other stuff maybe another time. So it is possible to find interesting stuff, but you have to be a bit of a jerk sometimes and just you know, stop the conversation because otherwise they're going to show you all this stuff that's totally uninteresting to anyone. And really, at the end of the day, we know what the audience wants to see, so we'll cover it and figure it out. Uh, a couple more. Crackly Nice One, can normies go? If you need to buy a ticket, how much does it cost? I actually don't know. Uh, how large is it? Seeing a booth at a time doesn't give me give much scope. So for how much it is, don't know for Computex, CES is 100 bucks for quote normies. And they only open the last day, I think, for non-credentialed visitors, so non-exhibitors, non-media. It's not super common to see uh, non-credentialed people attending, but we'll see a bit of it on the last day typically. And it's worth it if you're local, as noted in the other answer. As far as how large it is, it's, it's pretty damn large. So I think CES, for comparison, is something like 2 million square feet for the convention center, plus basically every single hotel on the Strip. And so we need about an hour just to get between meetings to make sure we get from A to B in time. Computex is easier. It's all in one giant convention center. It's like six stories and it's six stories of huge convention center. So there'll be, I don't even know, dozens, like probably approaching 100 booths per floor. So it gives you some idea, I think. I don't have a square footage, but dozens of booths per floor. And next one. EVGA underscore Jacob F. That's, I don't know who that is. It's an interesting name. Did you ever sleep? Question mark. No, not really. Uh, David FW555. I know it's pretty darn important to go out there, but as it's a crucial or as it's a crucial event on the calendar, but the very long flights and all, do you actually have time to enjoy the event itself as a whole or is it more of a necessary evil, so to speak? Uh, so yeah, we got to enjoy it. It is definitely a lot of work. Kind of answered part of this in the other question, but I don't know, I, I like it. And we go for a long period of time to make up for those flights. So we've been out here for like two weeks. That's why uh, we go for so long because it's 48 total hours of planes and airports to get here and back. So yeah, we, we try to stretch it out for that reason. And I think that's all of them. Yes, that is all of the Twitter uh, rapid fire Computex questions. Thank you for asking them as always. Patreon.com slash Gamers Nexus to get access to the other Ask GN episode, it's the behind the scenes one. Sign up for, I think we give those out to every tier, not just $5, so sign up over there. You'll get access to the bonus episode. We'll try and shoot another one either here or as soon as we get back. As always, subscribe for more. Thank you for watching. Store.gamersnexus.net to pick up with ModMat, and I'll see you all next time.